What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. So today we got to build a custom set of retrofit headlights for this third gen Toyota 4Runner. Now this seems like a very common modification to these 4Runners, but there isn't a whole lot of write-ups or videos out there showing you how to do it and how to do it right. So I figured I'd bring you guys my version of a retrofit. So this is basically everything we're gonna be using for the retrofit. This is all from DDM tuning. So we have a set of the D2S projectors. We have a set of the Panamera switchback uh, shrouds with the lights built into them, the whole HID kit and a wiring harness to power it. Right, we got the headlights out so now we need to pull this whole back bracket off of the headlight so there's this little clip right here you gotta depress the two little tabs on either side of that there's a spring right down in here that you need to pull off and then you just loosen these two adjusters all the way unthread all the way and the whole bracket will come off of the housing All right, we got the brackets off of the headlights, so now we can pull this bulb clip out, the little holder clip, just a Phillips head. And then once we get the lens off, we'll be able to pull the reflector bowl from the inside of the light. So to get the headlight separated, there's two clips on the top, two clips on the bottom we need to pull off, and then we can get this thing in the oven, get it warmed up, and separate the housing from the lens. All right guys, lights are ready to go into the oven. So I got it set at about 225 and we're gonna shoot for oh, 10 minutes. We'll pull it out, see if it's soft enough. And it's just kind of trial and error getting the right time without melting the plastic on these housings. These ones are probably a lot stronger than the aftermarket, especially because they have a glass lens as well. But we wanna be careful and we don't wanna bake it too long. Really the only thing we're trying to do is soften up this glue around the lens. All right guys, while those headlights are warming up, I'm gonna get these shrouds ready to paint. So I already took this one apart just to make sure I could get it apart without breaking it. So really all you gotta do is kind of just push the light out and you can see these little tabs there, there around the inside. It's just kind of clipped in to there. So we don't even have to take these screws out. These screws are just for this, basically the ring onto the light.
I must say guys, these lights are the easiest lights I've ever had to take apart. But looks like there's some sort of a uh, little chrome sticker on the inside of the actual lens. That's just around the edges, so we'll have to pick all that off. It's already, it's just barely, uh, comes right off, so we'll pull that off. We'll have to get this ready. We're gonna paint the inside of this bowl black, and then we gotta pull this uh, little reflector deal out of the housing as well. All right, we got this stuff all cleaned up. So now, before I get too far, I wanna get the projector mounted in the housing with the shroud, just to make sure everything's gonna clear, make sure the lens clears, make sure the shroud will clear the housing itself. And if everything clears, everything checks out, we'll get the stuff ready and get it painted. All right guys, looks like everything is gonna clear just fine. The only issue I'm seeing so far is there's not really much room in the back here to be able to tighten the nut. It's very, very close around really everywhere and I really don't wanna cut this whole inside out. So I'm gonna have to figure out some clever way to get in here and tighten this nut. But other than that, we're looking really good. Everything's clearing just fine. So let's take this thing back apart. We'll get everything ready for some paint. All right guys, we gotta clearance one thing real quick. So you can see down at the bottom of this bowl, there's two little tabs on the top, or kinda on the side, on the top and bottom. Those are hitting on the back of the projector right here, and it's not letting the projector kinda fully seat back into that housing. So I think I'm gonna grind those out, flatten that out, so the projector sits nice and flat and flush with the back of the housing. Alright guys, there it is. Got those nubs ground down. So now the projector will sit in there nice and flat. So I also decided I am going to grind out probably just a few millimeters off of all this stuff in here uh, just to be able to actually tighten this nut. You really don't want to take too much material off of this because these basically are, they act as a brace to the inner lip. So if you cut all that out, the only thing that's holding the projector is you know maybe an eighth inch worth of plastic right here on this flange so i want to leave as much material in here as i can but still be able to get something in here to tighten this nut so i'm just going to take my grinder here and just kind of go in at an angle and just take maybe i don't know eighth inch off like i said eighth inch off the inside of this and then i'll be able to get in here and tighten this nut when it's all said and done like that guys so ground it out and I left just enough material to still be able to catch this H4 adapter plate there so it's still gonna be aligned and then you can see there's plenty of room now to be able to get something in here to tighten this nut so we'll get the other one done and then we can sand this stuff out 
get it ready for paint. Well, I started sanding with some Scotch-Brite and most of the chrome just came right off. So I think I'm just gonna throw these in the blaster and just give them a really quick sandblast just because that chrome really scratches really deep when it comes off. So I think it'll look better if I just get it all off. So I'm gonna very, very lightly sandblast both housings and shrouds. <laughs> to start putting these headlights together so what we got to do is get the shroud onto the projector which you can see those tabs around the inside of the shroud those kind of halfway clip onto the projector but you do want to use some sort of JB weld or silicone on the shroud to the projector just don't get any on the lens itself you just want to glue around this black plastic part but before we glue it on we want to get the shroud on to the projector get the projector mounted in the housings and then we're going to want to get the headlights mounted on the truck just so we can make sure the projectors are shooting level because even with the h4 adapter plates there's still some play in there These headlights are ready to go back on so now we need to get the harness installed like most of these harnesses they're very simple you have battery power here each side has a ground and then this plugs into the original harness on the truck and then you got your ballast plugged in there to one side of the ballast the other side of the ballast goes to the plug-ins for the adapter for the bulb so very easy to hook up 
We'll get this temporarily on the truck so we can power up these lights and see how they work. There we go, lights fired right up. Really liking the look of these so far. And I haven't even hooked up the shrouds. This is just the light itself. So you can see obviously they need to be adjusted. But what we're trying to do is just get them level with each other, which a little bit of adjustment and looks like it's pretty good now. So we can pull these back out and fully crank down that rear nut. And then we can glue on these shrouds for permanent. And then we can put the whole thing back together, get the lens back on and we should be good. All right, we got the projectors cranked down and aligned. So now we got to get the shrouds onto the projector. So if you look inside here, there's five little tabs that kind of hold it in place, kind of keep a little bit of pressure on it. There's not really much for those tabs to grip onto on the projector itself. So that's why we're going to use some clear silicone. We're just going to put a dab on each of those tabs there and then we'll slide the shroud onto the projector very carefully without getting any of that silicone on the lens of the projector. to get these lenses back on the housing so a couple things we're going to do real quick i'm going to blow out the inside of the housings with compressed air just to make sure there's no dirt or dust in the housings i'm going to wipe down the lens with a microfiber towel and then clean up the lenses with some windex i just want to make sure there's no dirt or dust inside these lights when i get them together and then also with all these wires i'm going to tie them up out of the way so they're not resting on the metal grate of the oven and then i did go around and scrape some of the glue out i actually got most of it out of the housing and i cleaned it off the lens as well mainly because the factory glue is gray and you'll be able to see that with with the contrast from the black so i do have some new glue here this is just glass setting butyl tape so you just get roll it out and roll it into the groove and then we'll set the lens onto the housing, put the whole thing in the oven, squish them together, put the clips on, and we're done. So just make sure you get enough glue in these, in these channels to seal the light up. The, the last thing you want is a leak, then you gotta take it all back apart and reseal it. So once I get the glue in this channel, I'll show you guys how much I'm using.
All right guys, you can see how much glue I have in there or tape. So you kind of got to roll it out and thin it out because you really don't want to fill up the entire groove because you need to leave some room for the actual glass lens to sit into the groove or else if you fill it all the way up, shove the lens in it, it's just gonna start coming out all over, make a big mess of glue. So you wanna leave a little bit of room. So how I'm gonna go about sealing these housings up. So I'm gonna put the housings in the oven without the lenses at all, long enough to soften the glue up and then we'll take them out, we'll press the lenses onto the housings. If we can get the clips on, we'll put the clips on. If not, not a big deal. We'll throw them back in the oven for, I don't know, another 10 minutes. And putting them back in with the lenses, I've found helps seal them up pretty good. So. Let's get them in the oven, same temperature, about 225 for maybe 10 minutes. All right guys, we're back together and sealed up. So now we gotta get the, the mounting brackets back on these lights, get the bulbs in, we can throw them back on the truck and wire in these shrouds. One last thing I did is figured out this back cover. So this is actually the stock back cover and you can see here, the inside diameter is too small, so I, I had cut the inside out enough to fit right around this little adapter here. You can see there. And then there's two vent holes actually. There's one on the top, one on the bottom that I was able to pull the wires through. I still need to pull this uh, connector off of this wire and get that stuff through. All right, now we're gonna wire this shroud in. So there's four wires. We have black is a ground, red is going to tap into the running light here, the green wire. Yellow is the turn signal, so we'll have to tap that into turn signal down there, which we could probably tap into up here. I think it splices right here, and it's that wire there. And then white, we're supposed to tap into the hot wire for the low beam. That way when you turn the low beams on, it will decrease the power to the actual light in the shroud. And that is to protect it from overheating when you have the projector on and the shroud light on. So we'll have to get back here on the Forerunner. It's the top pin is the hot for the low beam headlight. There we go guys, everything's working like it should. So you saw, first I turned the running lights on and then I turned the high beams on and you can see that whole ring dimmed down. And then this is the blinker. So if I go switch this back to just regular running lights, it will switch back to the bright 
white. So now those things are actually insanely bright. So what we got to do is tidy up all this wiring. And then we also have to tidy up all this harness for the actual headlights themselves and go through everything, heat shrink it and wire in the driver's side. All right, we're all back together. All the wiring is tucked up. I mounted the ballast and the little control box back there. Got a ground there, power. And the wire that runs over here just kind of zip tied up there. No problem, out of the way. And this other ballast is back here as well. So let's fire these things up, moment of truth. There we go. Looks like everything is working. One weird thing I noticed is when I flip the running lights on, the passenger side comes on a lot faster than the driver's side. They're both wired the same, not really sure why, but check it out. I haven't even adjusted these headlights and we're already looking pretty good on the alignment. They might be a little high. So in an hour or so, once it's dark out, we'll get outside, adjust these lights. So now we gotta throw the grill and the side marker lights on. And I haven't actually even showed you guys the side markers. Let's go bust them out and check them out. So these are the side markers. These have the black housings and the amber. I really couldn't find them without the amber. And I really don't want to try to pick it off there. It feels like it's on the outside, but I don't know what it looks like underneath. And I don't want to break a set of brand new lights. So I think I'm just going to throw them on and leave them as is. One last thing I forgot to do is I want to disable the daytime running lights so these projectors are not running the entire time the car is running. So hopefully you guys can see this. If you look up under here, right here, there's a module. It's a light control module and this is the plug-in for it. So there's a black wire with a yellow stripe in this connector. You want to cut that wire and then put a little piece of electrical tape over both sides because there's still power running in that wire. So once you cut it, you don't want it shorting out. There we go, no more DRLs, just that one wire you cut and then everything still works like it should. There's running lights, headlights, high beams, so everything's still working like it should. All right guys, we're all cruising, so these headlights I haven't even adjusted yet. This is where I set them initially when I put them together. Haven't touched them and it's really about perfect, so they probably could go up to just a touch, but so there's a low beam, there's high beams. These things are very bright. Very crisp, cut off, so very, very impressed with these so far. Well, that's a wrap, boys. I hope you enjoyed the video. Like always, I'll have all this stuff linked down in the description box if you wanna check it out. All these components I used for the headlights are from DDM Tuning. They're a lot cheaper than like a Morimoto brand from TRS, but I will say I have used TRS and some of their projectors, and their stuff is amazing, but for the price, you really can't beat these DDMs. Well, I hope the video helps you guys out. Hope you enjoyed it. Go smash that thumbs up button, comment, subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.